We're your exclusive home to the upcoming Summer Olympics that begin six months from today. You're going to see the games right here, plus all the stories that I gathered in Japan prior to the pandemic. Tonight, I want to pull back the curtain on the geisha world. These are the talented artists who perform at private banquets. Tonight, you're getting rare access to geisha and their home. At night, Kyoto's Gion District might look quiet, even deserted. But veiled behind unmarked wooden doors are very expensive, often members-only dinner experiences. Exclusive evenings hosted by what might be Japan's most famous yet mysterious figures, the geisha. If you're lucky, you'll catch just a glimpse. This is the extent of what most people see of a geisha. Their world off limits to foreigners and Japanese alike. Tokyo's geisha districts, while not as famous as those in Kyoto, are just as historic. Fukagawa is actually the oldest geisha district in all of Japan. It's here that we met a woman. My name is Sayuki. Willing to grant access to this secretive society. I became a geisha 12 years ago. This Australian's interest in doing a documentary about geishas led to her pursuing the profession as a career. It was a historic move. I was born in Australia, but brought up partly in Japan. And I am the first white woman to become a geisha in 400 years of geisha history. Sayuki is both geisha and geisha mom. So everything is learning by example from the geisha mother. Sayuki has three geishas living in her home, including Tezusa. She is in her early 20s. She's a university graduate, which is quite common now in our district especially. Did you have family who were geishas? Or did you know anyone who was a geisha? No. She's known as a mako an apprentice. I'm the first. <laughs> You're the first in your family to be a geisha. Yes. So they learn to wear kimono, they learn to comport themselves in a Japanese environment, how to sit and stand. <laughs> and at the same time, they're learning lessons, uh, usually from the best masters. It's something that is only in Japan. It's very unique and very special. Geishas can take up to three hours to get ready. That includes putting on the iconic white makeup, a tradition that began hundreds of years ago. The old style tea houses were candle lit. So the girls with the whiter faces stood out from among the crowd. White and red, the very black hair is very stunning. It makes any Japanese look beautiful, I think. The kimono plus the ornaments add up. When the geisha are fully dressed up, they can be wearing $10,000 worth of work uniform. Once the geishas are ready, they catch a ride to the evening banquet, which take place at exclusive restaurants. At a geisha banquet, you see the beautiful geisha kimonos, you experience Japanese cuisine and sake, and dance and music. It's like a totally intense Japanese cultural experience. There are challenges facing this profession. Once there were 80,000 geishas in Japan, now fewer than 2,000. Sayuki promotes the industry on her website. She offsets the cost of training, charging foreigners about $60 to watch the geishas take lessons or get ready for a banquet. 
and her geishas travel overseas. We want to do a geisha roadshow in America. <laughs> People look at me like... For Tazuza, I do it all kind of celebrities. <laughs> like you're a celebrity. Celebrity, yes. This is exactly what she wants to do. Being geisha is still like dream job.